Hello, I'm Daryl Coyne, I'm President of Stats Club. I'm good to give you a presentation on big data, some of the essential concepts and uh, the tools used for what we consider now big data. So basically, I, the problem with big data is usually it's too big to, to actually process with a single laptop or machine. So yeah. So first, probably going to what is big data exactly? Uh, Mainly it's described uh, in a couple ways in, in that uh, in th basically what people usually consider uh, four Vs, volume, velocity, veracity, and variety. Uh, volume is basically how big the data is, like gigabytes, terabytes, uh, and petabytes. And <laughs> velocity is basically the, the speed of the data. Uh, Veracity is basically the quality of the data, how uncertain it is. There's problems with big data, and you can't ignore this part here. Uh, veracity, otherwise, it'll kick you in the butt. Uh, and there's variety, basically, from various different sources, and, and it's hard to sometimes combine things up together. So, first of all, volume is basically quality, as I said before. It's basically usually uh, defined as too big to fit uh, in memory. So, like, it could be you know, gigabytes, terabytes, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, and veracity, quality, uh, variety, uh, variety of formats, sources, uh, and sometimes we need to combine various different sources into one data set, and that comes tricky and hard. Uh, for instance, a web log, for, and, and then basically come separate values. And then veracity, speed of their data, like how, uh, when, how much data is coming in at a time, and uh, then you, uh, and how fast you need to process it to actually get actionable intelligence. So, basically, uh, for volume, sometimes like there's uh, 100 terabytes, or uh, Facebook has 100 terabytes uploaded every day. Over 90% of the data has been up. Uh, been generated in the last two years, so, and because of this, uh, it's impossible to do the data analysis on one computer in inefficient time, so we need a distributed computing center system, so basically think of, uh, like, that is one computer, and several, that's each one, like, each little time there is one computer, and they're all linked up together in, in serial, well, in parallel, to basically, have one part of the computer, uh, one part of the, the cluster work on a little part of the data to actually process everything up. Uh, veracity, uh, basically, uh, uh, we don't have the controls of regular, regular statistical studies. Uh, yeah, this is a big problem because, like, for instance, uh, we can have naming consistency in, in our data set and uh, could even have uh, different signal strengths of the population. So, if you just do uh, analysis uh, based on what we have so far, it uh, you will not get a true value for the whole population. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Boston Street Bump uh, app basically finds uh, potholes. Not everybody has a car. Not everybody has a, a smartphone. So, somebody uh, working with working at face uh, working at Facebook is has a different signal strength than somebody that's working with dolls. And those live those kind of people live in different areas and more likely so the poorer areas would be less on, uh, less signaled. And Google Flu uh, has a similar problem in, in that uh, you know uh, different different people have different access to the net and search terms. So you're getting different signal strengths. Uh, and Sometimes we have missing data. We can't usually assume missing at random, so we have to make considerable amount of effort into thinking, okay, what, what do we do here? What, uh, what, uh, what is this data set any good for the questions I need, or questions I want to ask? And so sometimes you just have to go, okay, yeah, this data set's no good. Look for another one. If not. Uh, basically, 
sampling. <laughs> Do, uh, this big data is not a replacement for regular statistical studies. It could be a supplement, but that's it. Uh, variety, uh, so big data goes with, uh, could work with uh, unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data. Uh, but, um, but you don't have the guarantees of SQL, you know, of, uh, with ACID, uh, uh, atomic, consistent, isolated, and uh, dur uh, durability. So you don't have those, uh, that safety in that, uh, inside of it. So usually if you can, go with SQL, but if you, your beta data is too big or too unstructured, then you have to go with uh, some of the big data tools. Uh, yes, and basically sometimes we need to combine various different data sets into one, into something that we need to use for our data analysis. And for, uh, velocity uh, is basically a speed of the data creation. For instance, Netflix watching a video, figure out well, where people are pausing stuff and, uh, and et cetera. But that's a massive amount of data that's co uh, constantly keeping, uh, coming in, and you need to do analysis on that. So uh, if, if, you, if, the, if the speed is too much and you do analysis, it, what's the purpose of collecting that data in the first place? So like 100 hours of, uh, is uploaded to YouTube every day, over every minute, and uh, uh, 200 emails sent every minute. So it's, it's, you need to be very agile in creating a data product for any kind of company or any kind of solution that you're putting out there. Uh, so go over some of the tools uh, for uh, for big data. Usually, I'm going to specify more along the lines of uh, Hadoop, which is one of the bigger uh, uh, bigger tools out there for Hadoop. It's also open source. Uh, Hadoop is a distributed file system uh, with a MapReduce uh, engine. Uh, distributed means basically it's piece of the data is on each could be on each se uh, separate node. You know the picture I showed before. Uh, like you could have like a hundred uh, hundred gigabyte file, and each each node has a little tiny bit of that data. So now, so now you could basically operate on that single piece of data without having to copy to say every single node, which which means you have massive hard drive if you had to do that. Uh, but yeah, so this way, and basically MapReduce basically is the engine to do some uh, data analysis. I'll explain later on. Uh, Spark is an in-memory uh, in uh, alternative to MapReduce, which I'm really in favor of. It's much more flexible and much better for uh, machine learning algorithms, sometimes 100 times faster. So <laughs> uh, it's quite good. And also has like, uh, lots of API, uh, good APIs onto it with Py for Python, R, and machine learning tools, etc. So, And there's also uh, GraphX, which is gra uh, graph parallel computation. Uh, Spark streaming is more of a good to act later on, but that's more of a, a production side. So like Netflix trending now, uh, algorithm showing what's, what's trending now. Uh, that uh, st Spark streaming is basically, is generated for that kind of computation. Uh, Storm, uh, which is a distributed tool for processing fast, large streams of data. Uh, basically used in very much the same way as Spark streaming, but uh, it's actually Storm is actually a bit faster, but yeah, it's less integrated. But still, for, uh, if you need speed, uh, speed is the utmost important, so it's better than uh, Spark streaming. Uh, Cassandra is a no uh, no SQL system for Hadoop. Uh, Hive is basically allows you to use. Uh, SQL like uh, like kind of queries onto big data, so it makes everything a little bit easier to use. And H catalog, it's uh, basically a catalog of figuring out okay what uh, what kind of format everything is and and and, uh, and locations, so that it helps. Uh, uh, so if you just want to work on some piece of data, you don't have to memorize. Okay, it's in this location. It's in this kind of uh, schema. So it 
it helps you recognize everything and transfers everything, uh, helps all the tools get along together. Uh, Pig is, uh, is a language tool, very much like SQL. It has similar functionality as SQL, but different syntax it makes it look more imperative. It's like, uh, it, it only does, uh, you basically specify what needs to be done, and then only at the very end where you, you say commit, it actually does it up and figures out what to do. So it makes everything more optimized, but has different, uh, different, I would think, say, easier to use if you're not familiar with SQL, but if you're familiar with SQL, Hive is better. Um, MacOut is a data machine learning library for Hadoop. So uh, basically, if you want to learn uh, do k-means onto a data set for a massive data set, this is basically the way that you can uh, you can either use uh, MacOut or uh, uh, Spark's uh, machine learning library. Uh, go into like a little bit on uh, NoSQL. NoSQL is basically not only SQL. It's very, uh, very much. Uh, it helps. It, it's not quite Hadoop. It it has a very similarity as in it could be structured on a undistributed system and has its own version of MapReduce on it, but it doesn't have as much uh, data processing uh, functionality as, it, as Hadoop. Uh, for ins but each one has its own unique value to it. And, uh, this is a great, uh, it's a great way if you want to have a massive data set and don't really need uh, Hadoop onto it. So, uh, But there's also a few that are actually uh, uh, implemented on Hadoop, like Cassandra and HBase. And for SQL, uh, SQL is still, despite being really old, is still pretty good. Uh, if your data set is structured and like only like 20 gigabytes, you could think of uh, putting up on an SQL server and doing up uh, doing some analysis through uh, through SQL. Uh, there's also Madlib, which is a machine learning library that you can put for uh, Postgres. So, in which case, it real helpful. Uh, Basically, uh, you could do machine learning, uh, you could do algorithms through that. Uh, the benefit of SQL, you could spill the disks, so you can work on data sets that are 20 gigabytes potentially, and not have to worry too much. So, going to basically the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, it's basically give you an overview, and I'm going to describe the things as they go up. Uh, first, uh, the distributed file system is basically uh, making sure that uh, each node has access to your file, usually uh, done so that uh, it's implemented uh, like where each, each node has uh, just a bit of the data. That's usually for Hadoop uh, and Google uh, file system and MapR. MapR is basically uh, uh, HTTPS uh, implemented on in C instead of Java. Hadoop uses Java instead. Uh, Lester uses a network connected drive. Uh, for instance, the the cluster that I'm using right now uh, through my URA uh, is uses Lester. It's quite good and it has some advantages over Hadoop, but at the same time some disadvantages. But being mostly being more expensive. Uh, next, going to like MapReduce. This basically is the engine for many distributed file systems. Uh, this basically helps uh, do computations. It's basically uh, structured in two main stages: map and reduce, where the, per, uh, the user actually defines what is the, what's being mapped how to basically transform the data. Then it's sent over, uh, grouped up by keys to the reducers, and the reducers aggravate over that data, uh, over those keys. Uh, there's main, three main uh, engines for it. The, the Duke MapReduce engine, and there's also Spark, which I really like. 
There's also TED, which has uh, similar functionality as, as it has similar uh, kind of engine than Spark, but it more blends in the background, so you don't actually see it. It's basically used with um, Hive and Pig, so that it makes the makes uh, makes your analysis go faster because it is an in uh, text is also an in-memory model that uses uh, graphs, which I should explain later on. Um, yeah, because you're not the only user for a distributed file system, oh, for a cluster usually, you need to get a uh, scheduler. Uh, this basically fi figures out what job to do first and what job to do next, et cetera, et cetera. So there's three main ones, well, three ones that came across, uh, Spark standalones, because I like Spark. Uh, but yeah, for Hadoop, Yarn is basically the the main one out there. Hadoop is the main, uh, the most popular uh, one out there right now. Even though I say Spark is better, uh, but and basically this basically uh, you can s specify according to Yarn like how you want things uh, done up like first one, first out. Uh, so it does by queue. Or you could have a more sophisticated uh, uh, algorithm to figure out what what uh, job to send out first, you know, party or whatever. Mesos is basically for stuff that uh, for a cluster that uses a dupe, but other other stuff as well. So it's much more uh, much more balanced, basically. So you can use various different programs for like a dupe and other sources as well, like that are not or not to do and try to structure uh, the the best way to schedule these jobs. And Spark Stenholm is a fairly simple scheduler. If you don't want to use Yarn, uh, you can also use Spark Stenholm. Uh, for data manipulation, this basically is a, a, if you want to manipulate your data set to uh, change things over. This is a great tool to uh, put on top for MapReduce. So in which case, this basically, you basically specify what you want done, and it'll figure out what what to do with it, and transform everything, and try to optimize uh, what needs to be done. So it groups up what things you need done at a time. So for instance, Hive, Spark, SQL, Impala, uh, Cassandra, HBase, uh, those are pretty much all use uh, syntax that are very similar to SQL. So, <laughs> as you can see, uh, knowing SQL is still really useful. Uh, and pig is is different implementation, but it has something something's figure uh, similar functionality. So, you, for instance, you could group data up. You could. Uh, uh, you could join up various different data sources through these tools. You could like convert, uh, convert uh, from one file, uh, from one, uh, from one da uh, data set, from one uh, uh, data type to another data type, and try to uh, uh, figure out what to do. Uh, so you could now process the data and figure out what to do for it with these tools. Uh, data analysis, basically machine learning algorithms built for. Uh, Hadoop. Uh, these are basically uh, like um, so. These are basically machine learning algorithms, even uh, linear regression, etc. Uh, Mac out could actually be implemented on uh, either sp uh, Spark uh, on onto Spark's MapReduce engine, or Hadoop's, or uh, or even Tez's. So it's very flexible in that way. Uh, Spark also uses uh, GraphX, which I explained earlier. Uh, uses the use the paradigm of graphs to do computations. For instance, uh, page rank. Uh, I think it also could do uh, 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 neural networks, but I haven't figured out how to do that up yet. Uh, serialization. This basically how what kind of format you want to save it as. Uh, if you like, if you save and specify your format, you won't have to worry too much uh, recombining the data, transforming it as much. Uh, 
of there's various different ones. Uh, for instance, uh, like he's transforming, uh, transforming, and par uh, parsing the data, combining to usable data set, time consuming. So this is basically a way of uh, if you're getting your data set uh, the way you want it to be, you could just figure uh, figure that out and uh, implement it. And then when you have your final data set that you want to, want to do. Uh, Analysis on for the next few days. Save that. Uh, save in one of these formats, and it help uh, help us out. Help you out. Uh, Parakeet is the is one of the more popular ones, but there's also a JSON, which was just a JSON format that, that you see on the net, but still, it's really good for. Yeah, it helps for interpretation of uh, exactly what what each category is and what type it is. So I've, can help do on that conversion. Arrows uh, as a project that help uh, uh, is a serialization made for a dupe. Uh, protobuf uh, buffers, it's a little mm -hmm. more complicated to use, but if you can use it, it actually makes it pretty fast. Uh, Java serialization is pretty much the whole, the worst of the bunch, and unless you really need to, stay, uh, stay away from uh, Java serializ serialization. Basically, tries to save everything up in uh, in Java format, and it's not very efficient, and it's not and doesn't really save much on memory. So, okay, data transfer. Uh, basically, if you want, you're trying to transfer data from uh, other sources, like um, other file systems, uh, or even SQL. Uh, like say you have an SQL server going on and you want to transfer that for long-term storage for do, doing data analysis, these tools can be used up. Uh, Flu, uh, Flume and uh, uh that one there, uh, helps move uh, files and flat files and, and do a dupe. Uh, Scoop basically can help with, uh, with between Hive and uh, between Hive and SQL servers. Now, streaming, uh, streaming basically is for uh, uh, providing new calculations based off incoming data. So it basically keeps the memory, uh, it's an active product, uh, like, uh, like if you have a streaming uh, job going through, that's, that's constantly running and constantly looking at new sources, uh, new data sources that comes in. So as, as a file is written down, it reads that file, uh, reads that bit of information, and sends it off to do some calculations, and spews up a new answer. Yeah, it, for uh, Spark streaming, it's done up with macro bi uh, batching. Basically, it checks every uh, every few seconds, like half a second or ten seconds, and then reads out the new data, uh, pulls that information in does computations, views out the answer. Storm basically does it as as the data comes in. So it uses a true streaming model, in which case it makes it a little bit faster. Uh, now basically management of tools. Uh, these kind of help everything flow in together much better. Uh, for instance, this uh, Zookeeper, uh, Super uh, helps coordination between tools. Uh, yeah, uh, various things that could be done. Uh, that this is under, like for instance, uh, node configuration. Uh, for uh, that's done up with uh, Puppet and Chef, and resource tracking, mo uh, monitoring, uh, monitoring the power of sources, and yeah, and H catalog basically helps uh, translate what everything's how what the data is like uh, for every tool. So it helps translate the data. With the uh, H catalog, you just basically say, oh, uh, I want to use this data set. You don't have to memorize exactly where it is and uh, what kind of format it is in. Uh, security access and control. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Hadoop doesn't really provide much as in security. That's another reason why if you can go with SQL, but uh, but it does have some projects like for instance uh, Century, Kerbos, Knox, 
uh, didn't really put down much for it, so <laughs> not really. And uh, if you want to basically use big data, but you don't want to ha have the aggravation of buying a cluster and retaining a cluster, uh, cloud computation is a great way to do it. And there's tools out there for helping a you easily set up a cluster on, like, for instance, uh, Amazon Web Services or another service. Basically, you you know call up the specs, uh, what you want, and send out uh, send out information that, and it will initiate a cu uh, cluster for you for probably uh, in about five minutes or so. And in which case, you yeah you work on the data through that. Uh, first, you have to upload uh, the data to. Uh, to uh, their own priority uh, 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 storage facility, I think S3. So, but this is a great way to work if you want to work on a massive data set. This is a great way to work on it, and doesn't cost quite a, uh, doesn't cost a huge lot amount. So, you know, startups and you know individual people. This is a great alternative to actually getting a, actually having to use a class um, buy and use a cluster. Uh, distribution platforms, this basically, uh, this, uh, this basically is for uh, uh, getting everything working together. This, um, these guys basically, Cloudera, MapR, Hortonworks, these basically help uh, easily create a cluster on, on bare, uh, bare like from the actual nodes, so uh, and helps with the maintenance of that. So, like, if you were using, uh, if you're using, uh, and like easy initial, uh, initial, uh, easy uh, installation and configuration for every tool. So this makes everything a little easier to use. Uh, I know, for instance, Cloudera have their own uh, uh, have their own uh, thing up for basically uh, virtual uh, virtual drives, so that you could basically uh, check out some of the tools on, uh, that they use on your own local machine. So you just need like a virtual uh, like a virtual box or something like that to basically initialize uh, like initialize uh, Linux uh, sent OS onto your own system and makes everything look. It's a great way to just check things out, see how things work. So going to MapReduce, uh, unfortunately, as step four, a single computer can't uh, process all the data. It probably would take too long. It might be a year <laughs> for some data sets. So, uh, so what we do is use a group of interconnected uh, machines. So, but the problem with this is it's processor and memory independent. So you, you can't just use your own uh, current set of algorithms, which basically assumes that we have the same, same, non uh, same exact memory uh, available to every, uh, to, every, uh, to every processor and to the whole algorithm. So, we have to basically have to basically change uh, our paradigm a bit, and we have sometimes have to make new uh, new algorithms, and so that they're not uh, not memory independent. And the solution to this mainly is uh, MapReduce. So MapReduce is a uh, programming uh, programming paradigm uh, using paradigm uh, parallel distributed algorithms. Uh, uh, to generate the or process data sets uh, mainly has two functions map and reduce which basically I'll take uh, keys and values uh, basically the map fil helps filter or source data or transforms data uh, reduce aggravates the data uh, according to keys notice each one has a, a key and value uh, when I'm saying key there, I'm just talking about a data type, and depending on uh, your job, you could have different keys and different kind of values. So basically, 
MapReduce can be broken into uh, several si uh, steps. Uh, recorder, uh, record reader, uh, basically you input the data in, map, uh, process data, combiner, it's, it's sort of like a, a reduce function onto each, uh, into each map function, which keeps, helps, uh, it helps reduce the traffic uh, for, for the cluster. Uh, one of the big, uh, one of the big problems with uh, like using uh, parallel da uh, data is uh, uh, is that transferring of uh, transferring data is really expensive, so it's really hard to do. Uh, which combiner helps uh, alleviate some of that that, uh, that tension that. Uh, and partitioner partitions up the data, shelf sort, and then reduce uh, reduce the function, and then input the data. So basically, it records from HTTPS uh, key and values, where key is basically just how far away the uh, data is in bytes, and values like what's reading from the data set. Mapper then sends off to the mapper. Then the mapper basically uh, transforms the data works on this data and uh, outputs uh, some key value pairs, intermediate key value pairs. Then the combiner basically takes this, this optional step, combines these up according to each mapper. Uh, for Hadoop, basically, uh, you must assume that uh, that uh, combiner is not uh, automatically used. It can't, uh, because with smaller data, like for, for very small data, like for a few megabytes, it might just Okay, this is hardly anything. Might not be worth it to combine, so it just sends off the reducer. So always keep that in mind. Uh, so, for instance, uh, say we have a key of "Hello World" and value one. We could potentially have. Uh, so, if we use a combiner, it combines it all up to that key, and say we would reduce by you know, adding to each one. So one plus one plus one, three. Uh, key and values have to be the same, same data type or the same before. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, the map reduce cycle wouldn't quite work the way you want it to. Uh, and it has a very similar functionality as uh, as the reduce cycle. Uh, so. First, it partitions off the data, um, in which case it uses a, it sends off to a reducer, which reducer has by using a hash function and and fi figures out okay, send it to this reducer or this reduce, uh, reducer one or reducer two or whatever. Uh, basically, what you want for the, this basically is a way of trying to randomize the data somewhat, but keep the values in the same keys in the same area on the same reducer and try to balance it to a certain extent that isn't perfect because sometimes you have tons of keys and on your data set for one thing hardly any for another so then you sh uh, shuffle and sort sort the data on the nodes uh, for based off the keys so that way you could do it up uh, do a calculation and then reduce this basically aggregates the data according to the keys, and then starts sending the, that out, uh, the data out onto uh, HTTPS again. Uh, for instance, if we do have this data set and we partition it up, uh, you know, by line. So the first one has bear, deer, river. If we uh, and car, car, river, etc., then we basically, if we do map found, okay, there's one for each one, uh, for each, uh, each, uh, each word, and then for each one, then we do a shuffle up. What does one for each one mean? Uh, when basically, it's trying to do a word count, so for every word it count, uh, comes across, keep, um, like, add a one to it. So, so the, shouldn't car be two is the second one? Uh, well, the thing is, it does it line by line, so it doesn't understand that there's could be several. Uh, there's could be some. Uh, doesn't really understand that uh, 
this that it was car was already found. Okay. So, it if you basically have to keep on keep a count, it loses some of the parallel uh, structure that you could use with it, and it no so longer parallelizable. Like, um, we just like add an upper resident and on and yeah. add to it. Yeah, that's basically what it's doing up there. It's, uh, that way it just, when it shuffles, shuffles it across, and then it sends off to a reducer, in this case. So if I it shuffles the base of uh, which, uh, you know, be aggr so aggravates it on the key, uh, sorts it by the key, and so that all keys are the same same line, so it just basically looks through everything. Okay, once it finishes up uh, one key, goes on to the next key. So then, producer, okay, like two bears, three cars, two deer, two rivers, and then, and then just basically uh, it puts it to uh, two H guess. I got this from a, a blog, so <laughs> it seems pretty uh, in a uh, basic script of any questions about this? Any, no questions? Good. Uh, Spark actually uses a, a different alternative to this. It uses in-memory model, but also uh, uses directed acyclic graphs. So it plots out what the computations need to be structured like, and it basically tries to find, then basically, uh, then it basically tries to group it up by tasks and sends each task to assign to different nodes. So it basically, so first directed as the graph based off the co on computations that you need to do, then divide into tasks and assign tasks to nodes. Uh, I came across basically two different programming paradigms for uh, for using uh, for using MapReduce. Uh, the the way the structure is uh, like uh, you uh, you want to basically pass functions to uh, to uh, change the data. Like al almost everything with MapReduce is done through functions. Like map is a function, reduce is a function, combiner is a function. And yeah, and, uh, so uh, actually, functional programming has become much more uh, much more evolved into uh, uh, into the big data. And for instance, Spark, which is uh, is programmed on uh, Scala, which is an object and functional programming language, with basically functions have functions can be passed off to other functions other, and other functions so it helps uh, process the data in much more parallel. Uh, the main, main just I'm saying here is a function, a, you're basically using functions a lot in, uh, in MapReduce. And, and there's two basically models of how to, how to use this. Uh, one I call partition and model. I never found any uh, other names for it, so so partition, basically you partition the data, then you apply unbiased uh, estimator to your data uh, to based off that model. So like linear regression, you would have your betas, your, uh, your coefficients, that's your, uh, that's your unbiased estimator. Then you would average results off uh, each partition, and because of central limit theorem, you would uh, basically get uh, uh, Big, uh, good accurate results of that. Uh, sketching and submission statistics, I think, is better if you can get it, uh, if you can use it, uh, but you need to change the paradigm a bit. Uh, basically, you partition the data up and reduce the detrimentality of other data. Uh, like, you quote, uh, that's applicable to the model. This basically is equivalent to a, a sufficient statistic, or if you're in machine learning, uh, sorry, if you're in a uh, uh, CS, uh, 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 streaming algorithms or online algorithms, they have a similar concept called Sketch. So I found these are pretty much interchangeable uh, within MapReduce. Then from this uh, summary, 
you would basically construct uh, our, uh, the model, the, the theta you want from it. Uh, the beauty of this is uh, if you can implement it this way, it's the same thing as running the whole data set through, uh, through one computer. It's, uh, it's basically equivalent, but you're no longer restricted to the, uh, to the to me uh, memory limitations. So, understand that? Yeah? I was just wondering, so you partition your data and then you find a sufficient statistic based on each partition? Or yeah. Do you, oh. Yes, the thing is like, for instance, uh, mean. A mean would basically be the sum, uh, sum of the values. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you do sum of the values, then later on when you do a reducer, like when you do reduce mm -hmm. again, you would, uh, it's just a summing of the values again, and and basically from there the very output you divide by the number of uh, entries you have, and you have your mean. Okay. That second method's really good, especially because some models aren't going to have admit an unbiased estimator, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's advantage of this. Trouble with it is, you sometimes have to change your uh, your paradigm and your also recode your algorithm. Uh, also, uh, sometimes you can't do it. <laughs> sometimes it's like, okay, I can't really parallelize this. I, you know, might be work of an ongoing project to figure out how to parallelize it, but that's, I would basically say this as plan A, and this is plan B. Uh, so partition, here's basically how you, idea of like partition a model. You partition the da uh, data up. Uh, this is usually do already already done through uh, Hadoop. Hadoop has like blocks, so everything's uh, saved into blocks onto each node. So, so for each node, it would have a block and up. So send that, and then basically from there you you find your theta for linear regression. Your basically linear coefficients, and then average the slope, and now you get uh, what, what I call basically theta hat bar. <laughs> uh, the beauty of this is actually uh, theta hat bar is as efficient as uh, as theta hat if it's uh, if the whole data set is uh, comes from normal distribution uh, x is in the uh, IDD independent and identically distributed and if it's equally partitioned. So if, in which case uh, sometimes just partitioning the data up is sufficient. Like for instance, uh, uh, you know, averaging. Uh, averaging basically come up to very similar results for both, both, uh, both uh, methods, because uh, your the mean of the average your average would always come from a normal distribution. In which case, average is also good again, also normal distribution, and it's also it comes just as efficient. Uh, yeah. Question. Yeah. Suppose x is not equally partitioned. Could uh, you not just weight your average and still get what you need? Yeah, but it won't be as efficient. Okay. Fair. Yeah. It, that's actually what I. Unfortunately, that's really difficult to actually get it equally partitioned. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do up like weighted average. It comes pretty. Uh, like the the difference is not huge. Like, but still, you need to. Uh, to actually get uh, do weighted average is better to do it that way. I, I'll show you later on. Uh, the nice thing about this is we can use actually use algorithms already done up in R and Python to find our theta hat for each partition and and um, by the central limit theorem, uh, our theta hat bar it comes from a normal distribution, so we ha have an estimate of a, of uh, what our uh, what our final result is in, uh, on average. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we need the, the values to be IED, so if they're sorted, we need to basically unsort. And that's sometimes difficult and like, annoyingly, <laughs> yeah. Some, especially since the, the paradigm right now is like for testing models, it, for te um, you know, saying performance of uh, different tools, it's actually sorting to say, oh yeah, I need to unsort things. 
uh, and unfortunately, uh, the model also has to have an unbiased estimator of your what you're looking for. If not, then your th uh, your theta ha uh, theta hat become biased, and that would also translate into the theta hat uh, bar, and and you're you no longer have much pow as much power as not as uh, not as consistent. Uh, and also, of course, the the me uh, the standard deviation of your uh, the variance of your uh, theta hat also has to be finite. If not, then you know, then uh, the central limit theorem does not hold, and things break down. You, your model is no longer valid. So, going to sketching, sketching, or sometimes called online algorithm, uh, is processed item by item. So, like this is helpful for limited memory, and and processing time, so like basically algorithm produces a summary or a sketch, which is the equivalent of uh, sufficient statistic, like for if you go from a stats perspective. Uh, and sufficient statistics is basically, what I was saying here, is basically the same thing. This is with respect to uh, the model and parameter uh, theta, such that no other statistic uh, from the sample would provide additional information. So it basically is a summary of that model. Uh, I think of it along the lines of uh, projection. For instance, mean is many ways a projection of your data onto onto one vector, onto the one vector. If you do action projection, it comes out to be exactly uh, the mean formula. Uh, so basically, this perspective basically uh, needs to break down the model uh, and I'll go into into much more bite sized uh, Data that figure out, uh, they can figure out and can work with uh, with uh, work and it can be used later on in the process to find out the actual model. Uh, so basically, so first you partition up data, and uh, so then you basically just get a sketch, and then you, then you basically group on that the, on a sketch to find the result. And then at the very end, you do the call all the calculations up to put up the exact model that you want. Uh, unfortunately, not all algorithms can be broken down this way. And, and for also, all the sketches or sufficient statistics has to be commutative and associative. So it has to, uh, you must be able to uh, come up with the exact same uh, result if you add the f uh, if you start off with the first uh, entry and the hundredth entry as the first and the second. It has to uh, it order should not matter, otherwise it won't uh, no longer will be able to be do it in parallel, and so on. So and so yes, yeah, so it must order operations must not matter. Uh, so. Let's go for mean. So if we just basically do uh, this section here, 96, 90, uh, 84, average those out, 75, 12 and 60, 36, 28, and 52 is 40.5, average those out again, and that's 50.5. So it comes out pretty close. And it's, it bids it comes up uh, in the sufficient statistics model, where basically, okay, read in those numbers, also add a one to keep count of, uh, of how many are done so far. So 96 comma one, 56 comma one, and so on. And then you, base, then you basically aggravate there. You know, aggregate, add the two, add the first, add the first uh, value to the first end of uh, First entry of the first one to the first entry of the second one, and second uh, second entry, well first entry of the second one, sec the second entry of the sec first one to the second, so on, and basically three of uh, three and six, and comes up exactly fifty point five. So if we this is actually use Sparks code uh, with an, uh, with Python API, uh, Sparks already. Uh, when initialize it, already creates a an object called SC, which is a connector to uh, Spark. 
So basically, I paralyze, I paralyze the a random number of integers, two thousand, I think it's two hundred thousand integers, and then uh, partition it up in ten points, ten spots, and then basically create a mean. Uh, uh, a function to basically create the mean. Unfortunately, with Spark, you can only iterate through it once, so that's why I have it so that uh, it adds the uh, adds I, uh, x and plus i, and then does calculation up at the end. And because of this, gets values that are pretty close. And as you can see, the it's you know they're roughly equal size, but not quite. So basically, we do a weight average. Um, I'm assuming you guys know how to do weight average. So, <laughs> uh, and when we do it up, it's like 50.15 or 18. And if we do it sufficient statistics, uh, which is uh, much more, you know, functional program, a little more of a functional programming way, uh, which you see is make it a little uh, easier to use. Uh, so basically, your number and uh, output of one, then you do a reduce for uh, x and y, where x and y are different items in your uh, in your li uh, in the code. So first first number plus is, uh, first entry of the first is added to the first entry of the second. Second entry is the uh, second entry is also added to the uh, the second entries are added up together for for each two th as well. <laughs> and then you basically find the average, comes exactly the same thing. Uh, so variance, this is a bit different because variance doesn't come from a normal distribution, so it is slightly different. So yeah, this is one way of uh, calculating up the variance right here. And so so n times uh, what we'll find x bar squared, so we need to basically know how to find x bar. Uh, and it's basically, I'm just saying that for a, that's the size of each each node. And beta, well, I'm gonna call it beta, something called beta later on, that's just the number of partitions. And yeah, so like this is one way of uh, calculating up uh, sample variance. And if we use the stat or sufficient statistic or sketch model, we just basically need to find this information. Uh, so if we do the partition model way, we go through it all, and you find the, the square for each one, uh, the find the, the addition of each one for each partition, and then also the square of each, of each partition added up together, and come out the variance. For, uh, yeah, and so basically, and I first map them out, then back them all up together. Yeah. So and at the end, the very end, we basically have forty-eight point nine variance. And yeah, slightly different than than the sketch model, which basically we create the number, number squared, and also one, then add them all up together on the sketch and then do the calculation at the very end and get, variant, get our calculation of variance. Uh, that's basically it. Any questions? First time doing this, so. No questions at all? Uh, yeah? Are there any like tutorials or resources you recommend for us to learn more about this? Uh, well, I'm trying to learn up, uh, there's apparently quite a bit of stuff on Spark. Uh, for instance, uh, like there's Spark Summits where they actually have like a tutorial session uh, and they actually record it and put it on the net. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's some stuff out there. Uh, but Spark is probably the easiest to, like, it has the most resources right now, I think, to learn it. There's resources for, for learning other uh, other ones as well, though. Yeah? Um, 
except for like eBay, Amazon, like what other companies do, do you know that use a lot of big data? Oh, uh, let's see, Facebook, there's uh, Amazon, there's like, yeah. there's Google, there's, <laughs> the answer is why they have their own file system, their own way of implementing things. Uh, there's also, uh, I know there's, Google also has a service called uh, Bi uh, BigQuery, uh, which basically is something like MapReduce, but it's their own technology. Uh, there's a, almost, yeah, any kind of huge company uses big data in some way. <laughs> I could actually do up a list if you want to uh, fill a, find out a list, okay. Okay, so who uses Hadoop? Okay, uh, this is bees <laughs> going to the seas. So, yeah. Cloud, cloud space, uh, Coolerus, Cornell University, Datagraph. Facebook, Fox News, Audience uh, Network, and yeah, so a lot of <laughs> companies. How did you learn like MapReduce? Like, what's a good way to like? Because you don't have access to that amount of data, right? To learn MapReduce, that's like a tutorial at home kind of. Well, thing. thing is, you can uh, install it for locally. They can install stuff like I have uh, Spark installed locally on my machine here. Yeah, so you can still locally and just work with smaller data sets. And like, like there's no really big barrier other than from small to bigger to, to learning it. Uh, well, there is because you know, of basically that's related to the four Vs, though. Like transform your data and change it around. And yeah. But, but actually, you're using the tools. You could pretty much use it done locally. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thanks.